Those uh, that have the power make the rules. Uh, Rassel climbs back into his wagon, leaving you glaring at the door as it closes behind him. Don't bother, Ranger. Grimwald whispers behind you. You cannot raise a hand against him with that thing around your neck. You roll and angrily face the dwarf. Did you make these for him too? He shakes his head. No. They are forged in the city of Brass, deep in the Southlands. The nomads of the sand raid each other's tribe constantly, use them to keep their captured slaves and prisoners in line as they travel. The you run, your fingers run over the metal circlet as the Grimwald continues. You cannot remove it yourself. You cannot, you can't get too far away from Master unless he allows it. You cannot raise your hand against him or bands. He continues, sliding a thumb across under the circlet around his own neck. Our, our bands are bound to Master Rassel. He is marked as their owner. Anyone wearing one must follow his commands. You will feel an overwhelming compulsion to do so. Oh, and even if you follow his orders, uh, he can cause you pain if he wishes. He has inflicted pain on me more than once as punishment for what he deemed disrespect or disloyalty. And uh, is that why the guards act so strangely? You ask. Uh, Grimwald nods. Aye. He insists that anyone who is to remain in this company to be bound. The guards, the laborers, he shakes his head. Everyone. Master Rassel is the most fearful individual I've encountered. He surrounds himself uh, with layer upon layer of protection. The collar are just one of many. How do I get it off? You ask as your fingers curl around the metal. The the guard dwarf shakes his head and laughs. I've been quizzing at that for for some time myself. I have no answer. You have lost hope of freedom, you are glaring at him. Grimwald shrugs. I have the faint hope of Master's promise. He told me that if I proved loyal, he would release me. Perhaps if he learns uh, to trust you, he will release you as well. Your hope uh, stands on the, upon the word of a slaver, you say, gritting your teeth. Master is not kind, but I do not think, he, uh, think him a liar, says Grimwald. Shaking your head, you glance around at the wagons. That's why you so willingly lend him your considerable engineering prowess. The uh, dwarf nods. I have strived to prove myself valuable. Perhaps your usefulness only ensures your bondage. Uh, you point at the circle around your own neck. For all you have done for him, he has yet to make good on his promise. Grimwald looks at the double wagon and then glares back at you. He has hinted he'll do so after we reach Ring City, he says. And he might do the same for you. After this, uh, we may not matter to him. The guards have resumed their places on the wagons and the Vahashas are stamping on the ground. You are anxious to take this trip, uh, anxious to prove yourself to the master of the grove, yet even the druids of the grove could not have uh, foreseen this uh, nor wished such an indignity upon one of their own. Nevertheless, they would expect you to adapt and complete your mission. You will prove yourself and sooner or later you will have your freedom again. The road around the foothills in is sparsely traveled, the tall grass and shrubs approach the path from both sides as the wilderness seek to heal his uh, wilderness seeks to heal the scar from her body. What? The road through the foothills is sparsely traveled, tall grass and shrubs encroach the path from both sides as the wilderness seek to heal the scar upon her body. What? The foothill? What scar? Is there a pa oh the path fucking hell I was like what the f what scar are we talking about is the the path that have been cleared out of the grass right that praise to the twins you chant uh, what was that ranger ask the guard he was walking along the caravan but I'm ten meters away your name you ask he's called Jaren he says I've already told you twice having uh, having never been good with human names you have not surprised you've forgotten where what what is that character again isn't our character human like he's like south I think he's Northlander right. Yeah, 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 our character is Northlander, but no, wait, he's Southlander. Yeah, our character is Southlander, but he is a human, I believe. Anyway, um, you have forgotten. To your question, Joran, uh, you say, hoping it will sink in if you add emphasis. I said, praise to the twins. Your religion, uh, Joran says as he smiles and jogs up closer. What are you praying to your gods for? Not praying, giving praise, taking a moment to give gratitude. You say, for what? Yes, for victory, where the. Uh, Mondravains once thrived upon the twins' hold sway, you say. The twins are patient. They treat, retreat from the farmer's plow and the bricklayer's road, but the twins always wait to take back the land that belonged to them. A lot of people died. The voice belongs to a female guard. She is on the driver's deck of the wagon, ambling next to you. You're discreetly inquired and since learned her name is Miribel. It is not mysterious that you have no trouble remembering her name. Her emerald green eyes are set on you intently. She holds the reins tightly, her knuckles wide. The fall of the Mondrian was a bloody affair. What do your savage god care about that? Life and death are part of the circle, you say. Without death, there is no life. Uh, Mirabel sneers. If only you could have comforted, uh, com comforted the um, Mondravian women and children with such wisdom as they were put to the sword. Right, says Yaren. You hate people so much, why do you serve the storm throne? The contradiction Rassel spoke of, you think. I do not hate people, you say. We are all children of the twi uh, twins. People are not lesser. 
Yet no better either, says uh, Mirabel. Her gaze is challenging. No better than a minji, mangy, um, mangy coyote or the termi termites housed in a rotting log. That one, that one uh, right there is a thing. That one right there is a thing. So this is a con this is a you know discussion between a, a someone who is aiming for nature and someone who is aiming from like a i'm just gonna go with human from right now but i'm i'm considering all characters from human because every character exists within nature to mold nature uh and interact with nature in varying varying different formats like back in the day we were living amongst nature we took from nature like the tribes if you look at tribes right now they took from they take from nature live within nature don't harm it too much to the point where it cannot regenerate itself and that's how they interact with nature we interact with nature in a more destructive format that you know we want more we want to be safe we want to have more food we want to have this and comforts and this and that and in the process we destroy nature uh, a type 2 civilization would interact with nature in a completely different sense a, a type 1 civilization even a type 1 civilization is a civilization would which would be considered that have completely like dominated this planet and has like completely resourced it out to that point we wouldn't necessarily need nature nature would be a control thing on the planet once we reach type 1 civilization except for like very the very uh small issues maybe from internal or like sun uh, sun flare solar flares and shit like that so type 1 civilization would mostly not have to directly interact with nature they would be controlling nature like parks there would be like uh, trees planted in specific places like on on top of each other to uh, you know act as co2 sinks and you know solar panels for energy and this that and other thing that's what be a type 1 civilization would be a type 2 civilization would interact with nature completely differently like we would go from earth and if we were to settle on a planet like let's say 10 light years away right right and there's another planet next to it and we settle on one planet but there's not enough resources on the planet we might actually go to the next planet and just pick up all the resources there completely destroying that you know uh, you know planet's e ecosystem and we might actually we obviously we will conserve and you know take up every species that we can find uh, and conserve them in like you know captivity and then release them in the wild when the numbers increase surely but still uh, we would actually just go and take all the resources a type 2 civilization could essentially just drink up all the oceans because a type 2 civilization is someone who has controlled their entire solar system so a type of civilization type like that just could come over any time and just pick up all the water from the um oceans at any point like you think of it this way like to us when we want wood we go to a forest and we look at a squirrel making a tree. I, I don't know where I heard this example from, but I think it was Kurzagast video, I think. Um, we look at a you know squirrel making its like home in tree. We are like, that's cute, but we still cut down the tree. We still cut down the whole forest because we need that resource. And similarly, may, maybe a type two civilization would come to earth and would just like, be like oh look at the humans making all these structures on here but whatever and they could just like pick up all the water from the ocean or other resources from the planet and that's how it works and the nature is not a completely like all encompassing thing that just like swallows everything and there is no going against nature or some cringy shit like that it's just a matter of time like we interact with nature uh, under nature and now we interact with nature as like uh, some sort of cancer maybe in the future we'll interact with as its, its master and after that we will interact with whatever way that we are going to be interacting it with whatever we need it for at some point we might not even need uh, nature at all and we could just create artificial processes on spaceships to handle this whole process there would be no need for nature at all and that's that's the fun part of this sort of discussion so i think our character is in the wrong here he's not in the wrong he's just like um He's making light of a situation that is very heavy, such as war, through like I think it's like it's like going to a funeral, like right, and then saying why is everyone crying um, because um, life is meaningless. Like if you're a nihilist or something, like it, it, it's it, he's being tone deaf is what he's being. He's not essentially wrong. Uh, he is just being very tone deaf is what's happening. You don't answer. There is no point. They cannot understand. Really, says Jaren, after some seconds of your silence. You think people are no better than a log. Uh, when again you don't answer, he laughs. Gosh, to think you're the one sent to protect us. I hope we don't have to cut through any holy logs to clear the way for our wagons. Uh, you may sooner kill us all. 
Do not speak of absurdities, I will teach you respect, you say. Perhaps something in your tone wipes the smile off of Jaren's face. You're not surprised. Take no offense at my jest, he says. You believe what you want. He, uh, he pulls the hem of his shirt down to reveal his slave collar. Even Master Rassel can't take that away from us. You watch him carefully for a moment. There is sincerity in his face, you nod. With the tension gone, uh, Jaren smiles. So, he draws out. You ever plowed the field of one of those uh, wood fairies? <laughs> Really? Really? I mean, I suppose, uh, guys, that's what we're gonna talk about next thing. <laughs> Mirabel chuckles from the back and calls you out and you're going to get an arrow in your throat, she says, as she puts a hand uh, to her own uh, tan neck protectively. And I think what you mean are wood nymphs, not fairies. Fairies are too small for the activity you're inquiring about. You know a wood creature? You say, peering up at Mirabel. The tinge of anger in her eyes melts away as she smiles almost shyly. Only tales, tales from my uh, grandmama uh, when I was the size of a fairy myself. Right, uh, Yaren uh, says with a grin. Nymphs, that's what I meant. I heard they're beautiful and hate to wear clothes. My kind of women. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Mirabel laughs again. Nymphs are dangerous, Yaren. If you see a naked woman in the forest, you best leave her be. Certainly, I can try to heed your wisdom. <laughs> Yaren laughs. Uh, tell you what, you strip naked as the day you were born and run about in the te forest to test me. Need to build up my willpower against those dangerous nymphs. Mirabel, that was a really good move on his part, honestly. Mirabel rolls her eyes and then looks pointedly at you. You see the burden I carry, Ranger? The only women in this caravan of rutting pigs. It would be a shame if I were to accidentally run, o run one over with my wagon. Yaren grins at you. Our ranger understands. After spending a month in the forest by her himself, probably every tree knot and go for a hole is a temptation. <laughs> by the way, if you want to have some serious fun with that topic, go to R. Don't stick your dick in that. Or don't put your dick in that. Uh, there's a, yeah, don't put your dick in that. That's a subreddit. Go there. There are a very funny things on there. I really like that one. You shake your head. I'm saving my seed for one that is worthy. Are you serious? I don't like this guy at all. Are you serious? He said the one that is worthy shall receive my seed upon her bed of fucking seeds. I don't fucking know. That is retarded. Who says that? Saving your seed? Yarin's eyes widen. You've never, I mean, well, he stammers. Never? Oh, right. A character is a virgin? Fucking hell. You shake your head again, a little surprised at Yarin's reaction to your virginity. Why are you surprised? That's obvious. You're older. You sound older than I am. Fucking hell. Um, well, I think that's sweet. That's not sweet. Are you serious? That is that is stupid. You're and it's not even like modern day where like the chance of survival is so fucking high that it's highly unlikely that you would die that early. Um, but isn't back in the day, not to mention your job, where it expects you to fucking run around killing things and almost getting killed yourself. So that's fucking stupid. Well, I think that's sweet, says Mirabel. A man with standards, she... Well, dude, are you a virgin Mirabel then? A uh, woman with standards, perhaps? A, a man with standards. She, she eyes yarn for a moment and smiles at you. Tell me, Ranger, what sort of woman would be worthy, she asks, and then quickly adds. I mean, I have more than a few friends, both calmly and respectable. A woman who considers her mind and body to the twins consecrates. Oh, she, he wants a fanatic. He wants a fanatic is what he wants. A woman who consecrates her mind and body to the twins, you say. Mirabel is silent as though waiting for you to go on. Finally, she prompts, and that is all that is required of her to be worthy? <laughs> that is a great deal, you say. To be consecrated, she must be of pure intention, and the twins must accept her, you say. Personally, I get redhead, says Yarin, winking at Mirabel on the wagon deck above. That alone is enough for a woman to be worthy to me. Although with the right face and bottom, any hair color will do. <laughs> I really like Yaren, fucking hell. Mirabel ignores Yaren and keeps her attention on you. Please continue. How does one become consecrated? Does she want to become consecrated? She was angry right a moment ago about the twins and now she's figuring out how to get consecrated? What the hell? It's not every day that someone asks to hear the rights of a sacred, uh, asks to hear of the sacred rights. Uh, maybe speaking to non-believers is worthwhile, you continue. A woman must pray to the twins. Tradition says that she must pray during her menses while waiting uh, in a river or a stream at least a day a day's journey from significant human settlements. If the twin find her intention pure, she will be blessed that night with the musk of the twin. With this scent upon her, the children of the twin shall provide her with nourishment for two weeks. What the fuck are... Wait, wait, she'll get fucked by for two weeks? Is that what it means? Wait, children of the twins, asked Mirabel, about like bears and birds bringing her fish and berries or whatnot? Wait, seriously? 
Oh, I, this is different. I thought she was getting fucked for two weeks. Okay, the, my my version was way worse than hers. <laughs> okay, you know, the specific animals and what they bring will vary between regions. But yes, you have the gist of it. You don't narrow our eyes. You jest. You want to play us as fools. I don't think our ranger here is much of a joke, says Yarin dryly. Nero looks at you carefully for a second, perhaps not seeing any human expression, she shrugs. 